Sure. Yeah. May I, may I yeah, add I'm to that? I'm breaking into the Egyptian symbols right now. I'm doing a huge study into all, all the Egyptian studies, uh, looking into the Ankh, uh, especially right now. It's yep. really, really yeah. amazing and fascinating. And apparently, the Ankh is the is the. Uh, it, it feels like it's like the key behind everything behind their power source behind all of that stuff. And I'm I'm about to I'm about to break that wide open. Word. Awesome. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, to build on that, that's beautiful. Uh, I just found out, well, the other day I did a presentation with ballet, the word has B-A-L-L -L and E-T. E-T relates to estrogen, and that relates to ester or ether. So it's the ball of ether or ester. Uh, ballet is the prima ballerina, like prima mobile, as Santos says. That's the one that's moving. So movement and dance comes from her, the Venus. She's the one doing it in ballet. So when I'm always going to etymology, I always find that these words, for example, in ballet, jete, in Jesus, and in jete, we jump and do that stuff. So we're basically honoring Christ consciousness through the ether, through the ball, the dodecahedron. Uh, beautiful, and it's just so expansive. And I just keep finding more and more things from your show, Santos, uh, it's just, and you know, uh, Sanchez and, what my man just said about electromagnetic. I'm wearing my copper bracelets for Venus. I'm Taurus. I'm ruled by Venus. So it's all, it makes sense. Um, yeah, it's, it's really beautiful, actually. Yeah, it is. Totally. Yeah, totally. I mean, when we stand at fifth. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The more I watch and the more I. Uh interact and get to talk about this the more i learn because even as i'm like to relate out loud my words uh that i write down to explain to people i figure out better ways of explaining it than i had it written down and i'm like ooh, that actually makes more sense than what i wrote down i'm like i think that's actually the way it goes and then i start you know going based off of that i don't know i kind of make connections the more i talk about it and the more i connect with people so i'm glad to be here that awesome. is uh, that's the same way for me sometimes uh, i'm from germany that's why i have a strange ancient <laughs> 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 you may wonder mm. wow oh yeah it's uh, all kinds of accents <laughs> totally <laughs> and uh sometimes i don't have to the the vocabulary vocabulary in English to to actually uh, tell about something. Eh? Sometimes you miss the words, and then somebody helps me and say, "Oh, it's like this," and then I write it down for the next time, and I think, "Oh, way to explain it." Because uh, yeah, sometimes uh, I don't know the words for it, eh? or say it in German, but uh, nobody understands that. <laughs> <laughs> uh basically my view on it my theory is what i explained to you before as far as the ether and the perturbation the best way to lay it out is like a you know oh well i guess that's getting into it i'm gonna try to figure out a way to say it quickly said before is where the creation happens the continuous creation of that with an added torus creates a plane of inertia within that plane of inertia uh in between anything and everything uh energy is compressed to a point of density that creates uh i don't want i don't like calling it matter because matter hints at particles and i don't believe in particles i believe the universe works in electro uh waves so i call it elemental material instead of matter so the in between the two torads since the being pushed down from both sides and getting compressed into that plane of equilibrium matter right there or elemental material is created and from there on the process uh just continues until frequency takes over frequency and vibration takes over to control the energy and create well, my whole deal is I want to. I'm I'm looking for the grand unified theory. I want to unify religion, science, and metaphysics all into one. Because religion, aka faith, and science and metaphysics are the three main principles 
of life that everybody revolves around. I mean, you're either within faith, which is like politics and religion, or you're within science, which is logic, or you're within metaphysics, which is spiritual. Besides that, everybody, there is no in between those three. Everybody else is pretty much categorized within those three areas of life. They're just the principles, you know, and I'm trying to find the unity of all three. So that way everybody stops their complaining and, you know, crying and all their indifferences and stop a division. I want to get everybody to think on one mindset and to realize the truth that, you know, combines everything. No longer are we looking at this kind of physics or that kind of math or this kind of whatever. No, we're all, we're going to look at, you know, electromagnetism, look at geometry, look at Fibonacci sequence and stuff like that, you know, get the world to be on one page. Oh, my bad, my bad. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, I agree with what he just said. It's about oneness. It comes from one source. Um, in ballet, we have five major positions. We have five elements, and the first one is Earth. So what I, my teaching is designed to do is to get everyone in the studio to realize it's not technique. It's actually a physical consciousness that is telling you something in your body. You have a bicep, there's two, a tricep, there's three, that's five. So I tell them these things so that they can see it in their body and they can be like, oh, wow, so ballet and dance relates to science or physics. So when they leave my studio, and then I give them assignments, a teaching assistant where I teach and I also am a student. I'm going for my master's in choreography. My thesis is about Venus, ether. It's all about the goddess, which it somehow still seems to be an issue today where astrology and anything to do with the sacred feminine is like, whoa. So it's interesting to, that I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that I'm in the system to teach that. We can align those five positions of ballet with the five elements, the five geometric shapes, and it goes on and on. And how Brother Sanchez was talking about five being Saturn. And it's like, it's, it, it goes on and it builds. And so then when I'm listening to all these things, I realize that ballet is this sort of forgotten element. Uh, a lot of people say, you know, I tried dancing and it was too strict. And it is. When I was dancing, I had to jump higher. I had to turn faster. I was told that, you know, I'm black. I can't do ballet because I should be doing Alvin Ailey and African dance. But Africa, it means terra and etymology, which is earth, the first damn element. So because I know my elements... I can then debunk all this shit about, well, you should do this and do that. It's about one source. And geometry and dance are definitely linked to that. King Louis made ballet famous. He was a Freemason. Uh, Medici, the famous queen who killed 50,000 people in one day, was a patron of the ballet. Uh, she killed, slaughtered the Protestants, but they weren't stupid. So I'm choreographing pieces based on these individuals because my faculty at University of Iowa, actually, they don't know who Medici is and how she was the first patron, and how important it is that we sort of go back and look at the behavior, but then also analyze the information within dance. And that is a hidden secret in there, that if you can decode it, a man was saying about ether and oneness. Sorry if I was going too long there. Yes, well, when we stand in fifth position in ballet, we hold our arms like this, which is the dodecahedron. You know, and I researched that from Santos's information. I was like, wait a minute, when I'm doing this in dance, I'm holding that ball or the child, the chi, C-H-I. So we're carrying this, like a cradle baby, these circles, right? And so we know that Bessica Pisces, that's once again Venus and moving around and how she dances up there or everywhere. Um, a pata does a dance for two. I can tell you each ballet step in terms of a zodiac, if, I, if, I, if you don't mind. So for example, we have Tor on Lair in ballet, which is a jump. Well, Taurus is Tor, on Lair is Aries. We have Gemini, the twins. That's a pas de deux, dance for two. Then we go to Cancer, it was originally the Scarab. Well, that's Scarabesque in ballet. And then we get to Leo, pas de chat, step of the cat. And then we have Virgo, is the muse, giving us the music for the ballet. And then we get into Libra, that would be in Francais for ballet. And then we have Scorpio is the stinger. We have PK, which means to sting in ballet. And then we have the Sag, the half man, half horse. We have pas de cheval, step of the horse. And then we have Capricorn, Capri is the goat. We have Cabriole in ballet, which is Cabri means goat. And then we have Porte de Bras, in ballet means the carriage of the arms, but boats go to the port, it's there. And then we have Pisces, it's two fish. 
When I stand in fifth position in ballet, my feet do this, one foot in front of the other. It's the sole of the foot. Sole means fish. And that's it. And so it's like that just gives you already like, whoa, clearly these French people yeah. or people in general, they're telling us something. So that when I'm teaching, you can be like, wow, I'm having an experience as opposed to a technical being barked at, be skinny. No wonder why girls get anorexia because they're being taught technique. And, and a huge issue in dance for women, especially, they're so hard on women, but they don't teach them that it's about, it's about you. It's about Venus. No. That ball is ether. It's the dodeca. So. What, what I was wondering, do you also have a position in dance for yeah. the sun and the moon? For the sun and the moon? Yeah. yeah. I was wondering. Um, I can think about it now. Um, well, we have what is called rond de jambe. Mm -hmm. the leg so the way the sun moves i'm pretty sure that that step yeah. is basically expressing that oh okay so i could tell you the moon might be um adagio it's at nighttime so we have a adage sort of slow i would say that the moon is a reflection of the energies in the combinations that we might have right, on the bar at ballet okay. we start at the bar and we're very stationary but at the end of class, we finish with uh -huh. Grand Allegro, where we're jumping up to who? Ether. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. 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 So I never thought in, I never thought uh, about dancing that way. That uh, it's, it's mind opening. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you have the tribe of Dan. Right. You know, I mean Dan, <laughs> Daniel, like it's totally there and. You know, my teachers were great teachers. I had Russian teachers, Russian, you know, Rus, Taurus fields. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, for my man who mentioned the Taurus field, pardon me, your name again, sir? Uh, the, the gentleman who was speaking for four hours, I'm sorry. Matthew, is it? Yeah. I was going to say that tutu is an anagram for Taurus. So the tutus that ballerinas wear is an honoring of that Taurus field. So when they're spiraling and I'm partnering her, I'm spinning her or she's spinning us the Taurus field it's gorgeous yeah I mean it is it is it is and I think that ballet can heal so what I want to do is uh start my own pedagogy where I, I also have a modern class it's called angles in motion hmm. the square the triangle that makes the circle so basically very simple I get them to move and make points with their fingers angles and they fill the shapes in and they make circles I shit you not if you're a beginner yeah. You'll be a, a master after a week oh. because it's atomic energy. Your body wants to move in those what, shapes. What, those hand movements uh, you just made uh, made me think of that, uh, of foguing, just like in, uh, in what Madonna was doing, folk. Yeah. yeah, it's everywhere, totally. Sign language, uh, mudras, they're all, they're, all, they're all angles. They're creating shapes. Uh -huh. So move in these little points of interest and they make their shapes and we finish with the circle and they fill it in, it blows, I learned from them. I'm like, wow, so I'm seeing your unique atomic way of moving. You know, I also teach that, you know, pi is 22 divided by seven, right? We have 22 bones in our skull in a seven pH balance. They don't teach that shit. So when I'm saying, like, when I say things like that in the class, they're all like, whoa, oh shit, I'm actually that, that number but yes you are you are that circular shape you know my my biceps are round my eyes everything it's a flat earth and disco balls and metaphors and things that are hidden that are really cool oh yeah for sure yeah i'm looking forward to an hangout uh for of you on the sun and moon group yeah yeah, no, I'm honored. Karen's been amazing. She's done some uh, videos for me. She stayed up all night putting videos of my one-minute presentations, which if you want to follow me on YouTube, I'm Raw Zen, R-A-W space Z-E-N. Um, and I'm on Instagram as Raw Zen 617. And can so I just you, do... Can you see... It, it, are you on your computer? Yeah. Can you see the group chat on the side? Maybe you can... Uh, uh, how does that work? Maybe put it in there. Uh, you have... Uh, Ah, okay. Or yeah, you have those uh, the, the chat. Oh, I see it. 
the buttons in the ball fun is okay and then you can post a link to your channel that's uh, handier i always do it like that i see perfect yeah so i look forward to just expanding with you all because i mean i'm gonna, i'm making a lot of connections from this show specifically mm -hmm. it's an awesome show oh yeah and i'm honored you you, you are all just so beautiful <laughs> that's great ah, thank great. you thank you for that yeah. Yes. Yes, it's true. Uh, if I could say it too to Karen, Karen, I, I often hear you say that, you know, you're not doing anything, you're not saying anything. You're, you're doing a lot. I, I watch you on the show. You're so humble, but you, you're providing a platform for a lot of us to get out there. You, you've already helped me get my name out there a little bit more. That's a huge, you're a medium. The medium is like the most important aspect yeah. of all of us. Without the mediums, there's no small to large. That's the neutral place. I just wanted to let you know that. See, Karen? See, Karen? I told you before that it was the case. Yeah. Of course. It's great. It's great to hear from another person that she's great. <laughs> of course. Come on. It's a powerful ability. Not everybody has that. And you, you found it. So good oh, for you. Indeed. Yeah, Karen is uh, uniting yeah. us all. Wow. <laughs> Bless you, man. That's amazing. Yeah. Good for you. I woke up at like uh, around 37. I started to see things. So, wow. Thank cool. you. Yeah. The, the younger, the better. He has more totally. time to do research. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was going to say to you, Karen, as well. Oh, sorry. Yeah, totally. Totally. Um, I was going to chime in and say your last name, Petit. In ballet, we have Petit Allegro. And Brother Sanchez mentioned how we have small, medium, and large. Well, we have that in dance. We have Petit Allegro, Grand Allegro, and then just regular Allegro. So your last name holds a lot of power in terms of what I do. So another connection for you. Well, Petit is, cool. petit is small, uh, <laughs> as far as I know, in France. Petit. Mm. Yeah. What? Yeah, they pronounce it wrong because if you say petit in France, you say petit pain. That's a small bread. Oh, sorry, the, the the German man. I'm sorry. What is your name, sir? Uh, you can call me artist, but my real name is. Uh... When I was dancing at uh, Bejar Ballet there there in Switzerland, we toured to Germany, went to Wolfsburg, and I danced in the Volkswagen uh, Cinema. I mean, sorry, theater. And it was really cool because it's like a. It's basically a, a, a warehouse for cars, yeah. but they have a theater in there for dancers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The Volkswagen is one of the, the most yeah, uh, recognizable, recognizable German cars. Yeah. It was basically a, a wagon for the. Yeah. I have to, do you know actually why it's called the Volkswagen? No, tell me. Volk is basically translated people. So, Volk is people. A wagon is car, so cool. it was a car for the people. Cool. <laughs> for the working class people. So basically, <laughs> Volkswagen is uh, basically translated roughly, a car for the working class people. Wow. wow. <laughs> Learn something new every day, like folk music, right? Yeah. Or Volks music. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, indeed. Uh, sometimes you don't know. <laughs> so. You know what? Unfortunately, what I knew about Volkswagen, that the logo related to the swastika somehow. Uh huh. That's um, the more, uh, yeah. I mean, not that I'm hating on it. I'm just saying that's. I was watching. I, I well, was... if you have, actually have another brand that is called the Opel. Yeah. That's actually has a swastika in the in its uh, logo. The Opel car. It's O P. E L, that's actually one uh -huh. swastika in it. Still made to this day. So maybe they got it wrong. I can show you actually the Opal sign. If you ain't sure, but you know where I got it from. I, I, I'm sure you've heard of Michael Tassarion. Before I found yeah. Santos, I was into Jordan Maxwell and Michael Tassarion stuff, and he had this whole thing about um, subversive symbolism. Uh -huh. it broke down a lot of things I thought were interesting. Although he's He's into some other stuff now. I've moved past it, but not that I was hating on the uh, the Volkswagen. Yeah. The swastika is just a... no, no, no. Okay, here, this is the Opel yeah. brand, and that's ah, the cool. swastika. See, Opel. Beautiful. Headquarters in also in Germany, so I know that. For 
that that has actually in a real swastika in it. Cool. Very clear. Or a swastika like shape also <laughs> with a lightning bolt of the SS. Eh? Basically, the SS yeah. also had those those symbolism. Of course. It's ISIS. It's, it's, it's the Kabbalah Z. Oh, it's all connected. Like the swastika is just the stickers of ISIS. It's all her. It's like yeah. it's not even all evil. Just if you do Volkswagen. <laughs> I don't oh. know the, the 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 logo images. It doesn't really look like a swastika to me. You know, I didn't think so either. But someone, you know, they they found you know people are doing research and they find ways to. Once upon a time, yes, I did. I wanted wow. to learn all the secrets that they knew about because I know I understand that they uh level they do release the fact that they worship Satan, but. Besides that, they do hold the true knowledge all the way back from like Egyptian times to, you know, and they share that knowledge in the way that I'm telling you guys right now, as far as uh, electromagnetism and, you know, the different technologies that go along with it, rather than telling you guys like, oh, well, the Freemasons saw the, you know, this meant, you know, the waning moon and this one meant the eternal fire and this one meant, you know, life after death and whatnot and just like well no 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 see this is actually a an electromagnetic you know device not only is it a device but it's the symbol for electromagnetism they're showing you in all of these symbols they're showing you the ingredients for the circuitry required for this particular de device to do what it needs to do so if you actually notice uh each onk uh that the pharaoh possessed so if you look at each individual onk the pharaoh possessed inside of the onk or around its uh, inside like borders, it has a bunch of different uh, petroglyphs or hieroglyphs. And I believe that, and they're all different. I believe that each one is a different recipe of circuitry for a different uh, effect of the onk. So like one of them would do, you know, a healing. One of them would do, would be a weapon. One of them would do maybe levitation. Uh, one of them, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It's either that or uh, they were formula recipes for changing the frequency of the onk, the, of the field that it put out so that way it could do different things using the Fibonacci code as the key sequence. No, the, the, no, the pyramids resonated off of what the cosmos resonated off of, which is what the earth resonates off of. It's the ley lines. And so the, the pyramids basically just... Uh, it, it's just like a Tesla coil. The energy already exists. It's already there. The pyramids and the Tesla coil, they just capture the energy and create a means for you to use that energy. That's what it was. So basically, it was a massive power plant that lets you utilize the energy of the ley lines and the cosmos. And they used it by powering batteries and using these onk devices and these uh, wasps uh scepters for you know transferring power for here and there and to do whatever they were doing back then yeah uh, you can tell it was all electrical power too because when you look through the egyptian uh tunnels and within the chambers and stuff you see zero soot or zero uh fire damage from you know fire source light which would have been what it was there would have been smoke damage soot uh you know burn marks scorch marks along the corridors but there's not everything's perfectly clean suggesting that some kind of electro uh, radiation type of light was being used uh, through use of, you know, circuitry and technology. That's why you have pictures uh, depicting some massive long looking uh, light bulb that was connected to the, um, uh, to the jet, which is the uh, electric insulator or the capacitor, you know, kind of like acted like the battery soaking up all of the energy. And then the energy, I believe, was passed through uh, the uh, onk, utilized by the onk. And maybe, I I'm still not sure, I'm still looking into it, but maybe the wasp scepter was a way for kind of like a, kind of like a, um, what are those things called where like a, a, sol a soldering iron you know how all the energy comes out to that one point well maybe the uh the wasp scepter connected to the onk which powered the scepter uh 
and the scepter just focused all of the energy from the Ankh to a point which utilized it as whatever they needed it for. I, I don't know. I'm still putting all this together. There's many depictions of them separate. There's many depictions of them together. And then there's uh, another thing I'm trying to figure out is why the Ankh is sometimes shown as being held by the handle, and sometimes it's shown as being held by the arc. So what I've gotten out of that so far is that when it's held by the arc, it's being controlled by the gods. When it's held by the handle, it's being controlled by the man or person handling it. But what it, the symbology behind you know it being handled or controlled by the gods, I'm thinking maybe uh, when it shows a hand holding onto the arc of the arc, it means that that device was freehand. It was a freehand uh, electromagnetic device, you know, something that, that didn't require a person to hold in their hands. Kind of like uh, we can we can turn a lamp on and walk away from it in a room. That's kind of like the ankh being held by the hand, and then the ankh or, or the being held by the arc. The ankh being held by the handle is kind of like you using a flashlight for light. With you, yeah, yeah. I, I believe that I believe the same thing. You're you're pretty much hitting it right on the button. They've completely unearthed us. They've they've ungrounded us from our, you know, our resonant source of energy. Because like I said, we our brain waves and our, you know, impulses that go through our nervous system is at the same frequency as the impulses that, you know, go through the earth itself. So we're literally not connected with the, you know, the massive thing that we live upon that we're actually able to connect with. I mean, even to a point that cutting your hair is actually a very bad thing. Uh, your hair is 100% interwoven into your nervous system. And if you think about it, your nervous system is inside of your body. It allows you to control everything within your body. Your hair extends out of your body so your hair is actually your extension of your nervous system into the world around you so that way you can better be connected to the electromagnetic fields that are outside of your body do you understand what i'm saying that's why uh the rastafarian culture they actually believe that when your hair gets all knotted up and you don't cut it like that the energy that leaves your body instead of it going out into the world and you losing that energy, it stays inside of your hair because it's all knotted up. So that way your body is constantly gaining energy from the earth and never losing it because it doesn't flow back out of your hair. That's the, that's, that's why the Rastafarians do the uh, dreadlocks. I mean, Samson back in the Bible, yeah, he I'll had seven that. of his locks cut, seven of them, meaning he had dreadlocks too. And that was his premise. You know, as long as he did not cut his hair, his energy or his strength would be contained. It's pretty interesting on how deep it gets with electromagnetism. It's not just physical. It's not just technology. It's not just metaphysical. It's spiritual. It's everything. It is the essence. The Ankh is known as the, uh, as the symbol of life because electromagnetism is the essence of life. It's what binds and holds every, everything together, you know, like, the wizards back in the day, uh, the sorcerers, energy, the magic, all of that, that was electromagnetism. They just found out how to utilize it. You know, I, I, I absolutely believe that back in the day there were, you know, just like in the uh, Mahabha, Mahabhatara, it talks about the wars of the gods. You know, there's even in the Bible, there's a book called the war of the God, the war of the gods. So you can't deny the fact that Bible, it says that all man, uh, the son of man, Jesus, so-called, says that we're all gods, lowercase g, and uh, we're all creators. And uh, then it says the war of the gods, plural. And if you, like I said, if you want to get really technical, Elohim, which is the normal word, the Hebrew word for God, is actually a plural word and means <laughs> mighty ones. So technically, there is no one God. There's multitude mm -hmm. of gods, even though the Bible says that there's only one, but that's held in the same belief as like the uh, the Egyptian belief system. They have a belief system where uh, there was one complete deity, but he, out of creation, created uh, eight deities. 
And uh, the eight deities out of his creation is what everything is. It's called the Ogdo Primordial Eight. It's the elements that create the divine, the divine creator, according to the Egyptians. Uh, it's like it's according to the cosmologies of uh, Hermopolis and uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, K H M N U, but. Basically, it's those the Ankh is derived from those names because the names are uh, Amun, Atum, uh, Kepri, Re, uh, Ra. Oh, there's Tatentin. So when you put when you put all the names together, oh, I'm sorry, here they are: Amun, Amunet, Nun, Nunet, Kek, Keket, Het, and Hahet. And when you put all those together, just with the first letters, A A N N K K A H. Ankh. That literally spells out Ankh. So out of those eight that created the Ogdad uh, was the one. And the one created the Ogdad, the eight. And out of the eight were the eight main gods of Egyptian lore that gave their power and everything to everybody. So each Ankh was based off of the specific uh, uh, the specific you know, god. So like uh, one Ankh to one god would be for uh, creation. Uh, the Another Ankh to another god would be for knowledge and power. Another Ankh for another god would be for medicine and healing. Uh, out of the eight, there's basically in the Egyptian lore, there's eight principles upon which all power and everything are based off of. And from that eight, there's one specific that spread out into that eight. That one specific, like I said before, you've got... <laughs> frequency without frequency you don't have the other continuums time space matter and then you've got the other three continuums uh you know um frequency energy and vibration then of course you've got electromagnetism which is a result of the all creating a trifecta of the eight you know you've got yeah well frequency vibration energy time space matter electromagnetism energy yeah <laughs> wow for a young man he's been saying a lot of things that are yeah that are sinking i actually wanted to chime in about the pyramids because we have in our brain metal array pyramids and i believe that like this mystery of building the pyramids i think that the brain is a very powerful thing and i think that back in those days we were we were way more connected to our pineal gland and the geometry in our head and i believe that we de built it from the source this very powerful antenna and its connection to course the frequencies and to today we have black women wearing weaves on their head and they're burning their skull to to get their hair straightened you know in order to fit into society or you know, uh, aphrodite i said in the whole bleaching and everything Sorry? people with the blood yeah, everything that they're doing they're destroying and chemically destroying their outside shell to keep yes, it from the inside yes exactly. you're absolutely so correct yeah, and so I've I've tried my best to illuminate that, and it's you get they get mad at you like don't you talk about my hair and oh and it's and they're they're making a fortune and um, it's interesting you know like we've lost the concepts like Aphrodite is Venus or the moon Afro so when you grow that Afro you're growing that tree out of your brain because you know cortex means bark of tree hmm medulla means pith of plants whoa spine means thorn thalamus receiver of the flower. In Ashtanga Yoga, we have eight principles that align with my man's Matthew's theory. Of course, the eight. It's the octa. It's everywhere, right? So when we're trying to get to these, these principles, I think that we're just so distracted from corporate, obviously, wearing sneakers because they're sneaky, you know, and we're covering up our feet. You know, soul of the foot. Soul. Soul means sun, right? So when you're walking on the earth, I, I earth all the time. I earth today in front of my my mom's beautiful house in New Orleans. I just stand in the dirt for 30 minutes and I can feel it. I can feel a shift and it changes you and you, you're not relying on corporate foods and your appetite and the, all this, like, you know, your, the blood pressure, your sugar levels are all mixed up and confused. And so it's, it's one of the yeah, best one things you can actually that. do. Yeah. That's why. Hey, uh, if you're going to, if you're going to do a video about that, check out Dr. Sebi's diet. That guy had the yes. perfect diet, Dr. Sebi. Okay, and then okay. I would yep. combine that diet with what you're talking about with the uh, grounding, you know, with your feet in the dirt. But then I would also combine that and do those two things in the afternoon and in the morning at the times when you can sun gaze. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, cool. Sun gazing. 
You can uh, also talk about the most uh, relaxing and most refreshing thing ever. Yeah, you can also moon. You can also moon guys, eh? Just uh, putting it in there. Oh, well, what the problem is? The most people who get skin cancer don't get it from the sun. They get it from those artificial sun uh, stations. You can lie under a sun uh, station with those lights. Those artificial sun dates. You know those uh, things? Yeah. Tanning salons. Sorry, how it's, that are they called in uh, English? Tanning salons? Well, yeah. The tanning salons. I believe so that everybody's scary. getting the cancer from all these so-called towers that they're putting everywhere. You've got all these lines creating all this electricity, all these phone lines, mm -hmm. all these computer, these internet lines. Then you've got all these cell phone towers and whatnot. They're creating so many electromagnetic fields that are mm -hmm. coexisting with each other, creating more and more and more potent and concentrated mixed energy that's creating these electro radiation mm -hmm. Uh, discharges that just aren't normal. They're abnormal. Their geometric shapes and their uh, frequencies do not na match natural things. And when they match through our body, much like when you uh, drink uh, any kind of liquid that's been microwaved, it's all bad down to the molecule, down to the you know micro bit of it. Same thing. Every time we walk on the street around any of these towers and in between all these uh, so-called lines for telephones of electricity and whatnot we're yeah. pumping ourselves of all these different you know poisonous fields of uh uh electricity so if if we can like figure out a way to utilize some of this ancient technology maybe we maybe we can uh create some kind of field of electro um, you know some kind of electromagnetic field around us that'll protect us mm -hmm. from the everyday bombardment that we're being hit by you know, maybe that's what this Ankh was. Maybe it was a protection. Uh, maybe that's why all the uh, elites and all the great people had these Ankhs on their bodies at all time. It created an electromagnetic field around them that protected them from the electromagnetic field produced by the pyramids. And don't forget the mobile phones. Eh? Those are the worst because all the children, I heard it on the radio and actually... Uh, we verified it within a person, the eye doctor I know. And all the children from uh, around uh, the teenage, the teenage children now, about half of them have severe eye problems that if they will go on looking at their cell phone at the short distance they are looking today, they will probably be all blind at the age of 50. All of them. All the children. So, because of what I learned back in the day, when you had the first computers, and maybe uh, some uh, other people as Rob maybe knows that, when you were sitting at the desk, what you were learned for a computer, that you had your screen further away as your arm length. In the schools, at the first computer class, put your screen as further away as your arm distance, because otherwise you will get severe eye problems. That was basically in the textbooks of the first computer classes back in the 80s. But people forgot that. that. Yeah. And they also they had the posture, how you sit at the desk and also how uh, high your desk should be and how, or how, 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 how you, high your keyboard should be. Because I'm sitting actually at the exact rate as you're supposed to sit at the desk. And I can sit there for hours, and my eyes don't hurt, my neck doesn't hurt, my uh, elbows or joints don't hurt, because I'm sitting in the right way you should sit at the desk behind the computer. And all those children also had severe neck problems because they are sitting in the wrong way, they're staring down at their cell phones. So a lot of children have severe neck problems, and also eye problems, even some Children that already in uh, they were about 15 years old. They had such a severe eye problems in their eyes that their nerves were already damaged to upon no repair. So that's a very big serious problem children have today. No, the lines in the computer that you're looking at. I know what you're talking about. The the lines appear because 
uh, within the screen, that's a hardware thing, 100%. I could explain that uh, okay. simply because of engineering. There's actually very tiny lines of individual uh, uh, receivers, tiny, tiny little individual receivers. And uh, that's why when you look at your uh, computer screen through like a cell phone, you'll get all these different lines going up and down on the screen itself. Okay. Uh, it's it's completely a hardware. It's it, it's in the creation of the screen, so it's it has nothing to do with uh, that. But now, if you were to take a magnet and bring it to that screen, and you see how it warps everything around it, that's showing you the dielectric field of a magnet. Yeah, right. wicked dangerous. I believe that uh, they know how to induce. As a matter of fact, not just belief. I have patents in my phone, uh, patents and patent numbers of technologies and frequencies they use to induce specific uh, behavioral patterns within people. And uh, they use our TVs, radios, and they also use these towers to do that. So not only are we being induced with uh, radiation at a constant basis, but we're actually being uh, bombarded with specific frequencies emitted by these towers from uh, government frequency, government uh, agency, whoever they are. I don't want to create some conspiracy out of it, but they're being emitted and it's creating a behavioral pattern in the people. It's keeping us uh, mundane, basically, to where people aren't, you know, getting too excited and whatnot. And sometimes at certain places, these things just, I think they've they just obviously fail when you get riots and stuff like that built up. People just come through in a certain way to where these towers, that just doesn't matter. But that's going to get dangerous in the future because now they're uh, putting in all these new towers, all these so-called 5G towers. So what kind of uh, <laughs> control capabilities are they going to have with these towers? Next, you know, first thing you see once these towers goes up, what happens? We see these towers goes up. Next thing you know, there's all these mass shootings that nobody seems to be able to explain or anything. Oh, darn. Yeah, wait a minute. I don't know if they're doing that where you guys are. Well, over here in America, they've got all these towers that they're putting up, 5G towers. And uh, it's for I don't the new... Them near, them, near me. I live, yeah, we have them here. Yeah. I, I live in the forest. The, the closer cell tower is about uh, 50 miles away. Well, that's pretty good, man, especially if you live up in the mountains. Even if you live up in the mountains, though, don't forget, look at what happened in California just now, man. They've, they've got those aerial uh, weapons, those, uh, those weaponized uh, cones in the front of the airplanes that use uh, microwavable laser technology, and they start fires. I mean, look at the California fires. Even the uh, the tree shrubs that are directly rubbing up next to houses are not burned completely. The houses are burned down to a complete crisp, but like bushes next to the houses, no. So what I'm thinking is that these uh, these lasers, they're damaging only organic, damaging, uh, or they're not. They're damaging inorganic, not organic compounds. So everything organic, as you can see, all the trees are not touched, but everything else is. So it's not getting metals and stuff like that, but it's destroying everything like wood and whatnot. I don't know. I don't know. I, I want to study the Hutchinson effect a lot more. I think the Hutchinson effect literally deals with he's found a way to the actual frequency of the object. What that does is it uh, it nullifies what's holding that object, what's holding the uh, the elemental material together inside of that object so it so to make it less confusing i'll just go ahead and say particles and molecules so basically the hutchinson effect he creates a frequency that matches the exact frequency that's holding the molecules together that creates that block of metal and what that does is it vibrates the air around it at the same frequency matching the molecules and the molecules start separating to fill the missing space in the air and that pretty much just like turns it into a mush if then that's what you see it's 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 and it's tesla technology he built a box that you could hold in your hand and you could put it next to a skyscraper and make the skyscraper shake to the point of being like an earthquake it's it's frequency technology and i believe that's the same technology that the ancients used you know vibration frequency and energy that's why tesla said that he's like thinking those terms because everything eventually revolves around those three principles 
even electromagnetism, everything, minus space, time, and matter. But that's the creation continuum. It's actual geoengineering type stuff. It allows them to manipulate the weather and stuff. They're putting metal particulates and certain things in the air like boron and whatnot. And when you pump a microwave uh, beam into that, it messes with those molecules that are in the air and it messes with them and creates different uh, temperatures which different temperatures mixing in with like a really, really hot temperature formed because of the cloud that you just microwave beam. Well, now that area is going to get hit with a cold front and that area getting hit with a cold front is going to move this way because of the weather pattern that they already know about. And that's going to create a storm right here in this particular area because that's the way that the weather's flowing. They just got to create the the start to it, you know, that's so I'm wondering if that's what they're doing with the pipes in the water is if they're ionizing the uh, the water and that that pumps the air full of you know, like moisturizes the air and mixes with those chemicals that are in the air. And then they pump, you know, beams of microwave energy into the air to. Well, that's what they're doing with everything. They're back engineering. What do you think CERN is doing with their hydro collider? They're trying to back engineer God for crying out loud. The God particle? Come on, give me a break. But uh, yeah, no. Uh, I, just I, just uh, before you go any further, I'm going to leave because it's now half past three in the morning over here in Germany, and I have to get up uh, in about uh, four hours. So, uh, bummer. Thanks for all the great information. Thank for the. Yeah, that's great, as always. <laughs> see you next time. And uh, if I don't see you before the new year, everybody, a very healthy new year. Pleasure meeting you. Yeah, definitely. Great, great talking to you. I'm willing to keep going if you guys are just for BS, BSing and, you know, trying to get to know each other and our knowledge and connections and whatnot. I'm going to take like a five minute intermediate smoke break. So give me a sec. I'll, I'm just going to listen. Yeah, I could hear you guys. Oh, I wasn't sure if you got, if you could hear me. I was just curious. Yeah, so uh, I, I do want to get in on some of the Egypt since we're winding it down and we're just kind of talking about randoms now. Uh, what do you guys think? Have you guys researched uh, the Egyptian symbology at all, as far as our way of thinking and electromagnetism? Honestly, like I, I really do believe that the reason why they knew all that. Uh, that stuff was because I believe in the fallen angels and it's the only story that seems to resonate, you know, the best with me as far compared to like all the other religious stories. Uh, the only, the only difference being <clears throat> that uh, I need to get down as far as my personal belief is what I heard earlier today I need to study the word Elohim or because if it's plural word, then that means the Bible really was based. It really was a uh, story based religion created off of the Egyptian belief system. And if that's the case, then I really need to figure out where everything really did start. Well, I know that Elohim means to turn and twist. Can y'all hear me? <coughs> you can hear me I, I can't it's my first time doing this so i don't know if i've lost connection <laughs> no i can hear you i can hear you great okay cool yeah so um in ballet we do pirouettes and pyro pyros means fire so the pyramid means fire in the middle is a certain it's in a certain place so to my understanding i would assume that the way that they saw what they saw all these things is they had a certain kind of a a natural relationship and once again with metal ra pyramids in the brain and it's going up they had a unique relationship with the ether and i'm sure that they were also experiencing other entities i would i don't think they were by themselves in my opinion i think they had some assistance and then i think there was some infiltration that happened when venus's birth i'm reading a book called many belikovsky's worlds in collision and earth and upheaval low birth but he says some interesting things about the birthing of Venus and how when she was attacking and creating her, her star, the fiery energies coming from the heavens uh, shifted the consciousness of everything and sort of rattled our cage. But sorry, sorry, back to the Elohim being to turn and twist. 
what I'm doing in ballet, when I'm turning or when I'm partnering my partner, like pottery, like Harry Potter, we're creating these spirals that constantly go up. So the vibration today is not so much about going up. It's about staying here. It's stuck. In those days, they were constantly celebrating energies that were going up and they were living a natural life. They were living on wheat and barley, apparently, only. They weren't eating a bunch of stuff to distract them from having a relationship and their pineal glands weren't calcified. I think that if we had a unique relationship with our food since childhood, then our pineal glands would be able to see what they saw at times 10. Because this little thing in the middle of our eye is what I believe they had completely activated. Kind of my understanding, if that makes any sense to any, any of y'all. Yeah, it goes, it goes to the crown, right? Yeah, of course. So when, when, you're, when you're breathing and you're constantly taking the air up, like when I'm trying to get my dancers to breathe, the first reaction I get is this. <gasps> They're all nervous. They don't want to just breathe in and breathe out. I ask children to breathe. I notice a pattern. Everyone's eyes are gray. Their energy is down. Everyone is stuck. And so I'm constantly trying to like be a cheerleader for breath, just simple, the, the, the octahedron right so these elements today they're so vast and there's so much to them that can open up more information for us and yeah it's man in ancient times they had they just had so much going on with natural energy um i believe that they used bells and vibrations to lift things for sure sound to lift heavy 1000 tons uh, stones and bow back I mean, how the hell they lift that? Today they can't lift those those stones, right? So it wasn't just man-made energies and men heaving and hoeing. We were probably vibrating and speaking. Um, in Menno Velikovsky's um, Worlds in Collision, he speaks of the Snohomish Native Americans and how they said Yahoo, and they raised the sky when Venus was attacking. The sky darkened and apparently it, it lowered for like a while and it was just completely different. And so they all got together and chanted. Like my man Matthew was saying, I believe that we need to get together not only to just uh, create energies uh, for these towers, we need to get together and chant and, and be on a similar vibration like, and constantly say something that just shifts and, and, and removes this very constant, noisy, down-to-earth energy. You know what I mean? It's okay to be grounded. I actually uh, just researched something just like that when, when it comes to chants and ohms in – if you uh when they do those when they do those hums you know in the buildings and whatnot i believe that they're humming at the specific uh frequencies of the fibonacci sequence so mm -hmm. one would the so one person will hum at 432 the next at 580 the next at 720 the next you know and it keeps going and when you hum all these frequencies at once you know, on say uh a uh, pyramid shape so a pyramid shape at a five or at a 432 is the beginning right so that's got its um what is it one two three four points so at the four points in this deals i just i just watched something about this now now i want to find that video but sure. when they hum at a, at a specific you know yeah when they hum at a specific shape it makes a specific frequency so like the pyramids 432 then the cube is 580 and then you keep going from there but when you do that it creates uh specific energies specific hormones and i think that the the shapes of the chambers that they would be inside the temple shapes Mm -hmm. uh, it resonated those frequencies. And so those hums, when they put them all together, they yep. actually did something. That's why you had like, you know, a group of monks all praying and humming around one person who was sick with like, you know, some kind of disease or blindness or some ailment. And by the time they left and they were gone, they were like, Oh my God, it's a miracle. I'm healed. Yeah. And they're like, no, it's just, you know, technology. <laughs> Go ahead, Karen. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, you, you, you all just had me. I, I've, I've had an aha moment. <laughs> so when, these, uh, when they're walking around the Kaaba in a circle, the Kaaba is a cube. Now, each brain has a uh, metal array pyramid, right? So it takes the square and a triangle to make a cipher, a circle. So now I'm, I, I would gather that if these individuals were walking around that Kaaba and chanting in a certain vibration, they, they are making all the geometry 
that could open up and send energies up that could possibly take us to a higher vibration or possibly even repel half the crap going on today. But because there's so much noise in here, on understandings of God, they're not really chanting, I think, in a, in a manner where like what you just said, Karen, like, okay, so it takes all these pyramids to make an uh, icosahedron. If you look at geometry, they stick together upside down and they work together to make the elements and they each have a stage. So when I'm dancing on stage, haha, or the flat energy of the earth comes from that, that's the platform that's, that's for the stove that has this vibration in it. And so uh, I think it's totally about being aware of what we're thinking and, and, and being more connected and communicating as opposed to just sort of doing a routine. Oh, today we're going to go and, you know, wash our feet because so-and-so said to wash our feet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Today we're going to walk in a circle because, you know, someone, so-and-so said so. There's more to it than that. And there's more things that I think we could benefit from if we were more connected to our thoughts. That makes any that sense. Made me, that made me think. Huh? I mean, I'm wondering if there's a how they outline you in shock on a homicide scene, right? See, all these things, and a teacher uses that shock, it looks like bone. You know, bamboo looks like my bone. The druids, people of the oak. Once again, metallare, uh, sorry, cortex means bark of tree. So we're not only just geometry, that we're, we are literally a manifestation of nature. Like, we are clearly a hybrid of everything. And... But I think Matthew was going to chime in to say something as well, too. So I'm going to open that up. Oh, oh no, you're good. I was going to say earlier Go he was talking about the uh, when people are riding around in circles and chanting around the, uh, the, the Kaaba. It made me think when I was picturing it in my mind, I've got a visual mindset, and it looks like a visual manifestation of... Uh, uh, electromagnetic field around a uh, cube magnet. You know, it looks like the torus around a cube magnet. Yep. <clears throat> totally. You know, yeah. Well, not the torus, but technically that would be like the plane of inertia, really. And all around yeah. them, if if there was like an energy kind of uh, circling in a spiral form all around them, as they mm -hmm. went around in a circle, that would be like the returning energy into the cube which would be like the, the magnet it just it, it just uh it, it was a striking thought that's all that's awesome yeah yep sure earlier when i was doing a video with you guys last time we did a video i actually made it an invention uh i call it the uh the seed screw but it's basically like uh here i'll show you guys uh, it was when we were doing the my first live video with you guys I made it. I was just uh, sitting there while we were talking about everything. Here, once I find it, I'll show it to you guys. But basically, you fit the seed inside of this uh, thing, and it's made out of copper that you stick into the ground. The spike copper part goes in the ground, so that feeds the energy through it. And then uh, the energy is pulled through a magnet at the top part of the screw. And then that mat and then there's a secondary copper ring around the top part of it so that way the uh the energy is pulled back here we go pulled back through the ring okay. and it's on the uh so here can you see this mm -hmm. so this is the copper part right here and it's got a twisted coil on it so that way the energy comes up to it here's a magnet right here uh, so that way the energy is pulled into it and thrown out this way and the copper ring focuses the energy so that way the energy doesn't go everywhere. So you pack this part inside full of dirt and you put the seed right in the middle right there. So that way the energies from the earth are forced through there into the seed and up and out. That way the energies are forced out creating a column and the seed will naturally follow that energy because it's the thickest and strongest part and it'll grow stronger and better. If I could add to that, um, Santos gave me some wonderful advice. I had a plant that was dying. I had two plants that were dying. And um, I felt horrible because I, I left them outside in the sun and it just got really cold in Iowa. I'm going to the University of Iowa there. And they just died. So for a whole month, the plants, nothing grew. Nothing was coming out. And I was like, shit, I was trying to give them water. So I asked him, did he have any advice? He said, chant Hare Krishna. 
So, you know, I felt kind of weird about it. I, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I'm all about that energy. So I did it, you know, talking to these plants. I'm, I'm chanting, I'm chanting. Nothing was growing, but I shit you not. About a month later, three green things start pumping out of the dirt. And the other plant, green leaves start pumping out of the sides of the dead plants from chanting to it. And so now, not only do I have three, then a fourth one grew. And there were three that were dead. And a four, so it's like, there's definitely something going on within the geometry in our head, like where our brain is designed with the, with the pyramid structure or the sort of tetrahedron energy. There's a fiery electricity that when we chant, when we say, when we set forth energy and we have the right intention, we can grow anything. We can change anything. I've, how'd I end up in a university teaching what I teach? I was, I was horrible in school. I was in special ed. You know, I was told I was dumb, all this stuff, right? And then somehow, I'm not, I'm not, I had no undergraduate. I didn't go through writing classes, but I went through research. I woke up, and so I, somehow the universe put me. So it's, there's an energy that we definitely can create from either chanting or uh, putting your energy towards something that is about creating life totally believe that we can grow and do anything with our brain the funny the the, not funny but the great thing about what you just said is the fact that they said about krishna which means that he derived that chant out of the indian based faith and this is what i'm talking about when it comes to the faith connection and i feel like i actually just figured out how to find that faith connection because of what you just said so just now i had my massive grand unified theory moment so i can connect all religions now i just need to find the middle ground between each religion so the indian based religion or faith system their chants their homes and they're known that they're one of the most spiritual magical places in the world and it's because of their chants and their homes i think that's because they might have had the best grasp on the knowledge of uh sound and vibration yes sir so if that's if that's the connection for that one then that would mean like the egyptian uh connection for its faith system would be there it was based around electromagnetism then if you want to go even further than that then you would say like the you know the buddhist you know in asia you know you i don't know you can just keep going on and on and on and go throughout the entire world and find all the religions and see the common ground which they were trying to teach everybody through the religion i think that's going to be the common ground that'll pull it all together actually find find the uh things so just because of what you just said so that's awesome (laughs) Hey man, I'm I'm grateful to uh, to have met you because I'm listening to you and I'm like, wow, yeah, you know what I mean. And I'm riding with you, and then Karen, she's saying things. I'm riding with with her as well, and it just what it does is it oscillates, and then we we get to a higher place. You know, there's always threes. You know, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. You know, it's like it's pretty obvious that these numbers, this Trinity, is a result of something. It doesn't just, you don't just have it there to be cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not just some material thing that is just existing. It actually is in everyone. We have these numbers. And if we're connected to the numbers, then we can become this human keypad. Hence the Kabbalah has those 10 buttons and we have that keypad. Well, how do we activate that? Well, we don't activate it by eating McDonald's, obviously. Nothing, I mean, I used to eat the stuff. And so if anyone struggles with eating that food, I empathize, but Clearly, these things are being thrown in our face to have us disconnected from having a supernatural experience or literally making something happen out of a miracle experience. And so, yeah, that that plant thing for me, when Santos told me that and I did it and I saw that, I was like, it it came at a great time for me because I was going through a bit of a difficult time. I was like, wow. And And the plants were inside my house with no good light and chemtrails everywhere. Like, wow. (laughs) It's amazing. Uh, it's, it's it's a place of opinions and, and yeah and um and ego you know like for example i'm dealing with a faculty right now that's battling me because you know i i know certain things and i'm about trying to elevate there are people who are suicidal and and, and, and depressed everyone's on medication why when i'm teaching my class half of them are on medication and depressed one one of my students said to me 
I'm so sorry today. I just, you know, I, I, I had a bad night because, you know, I was feeling, you know, suicidal. And I said, listen, you showed up. Give yourself some love that, that you showed up, that you, that you at least came, that you're opening yourself to my class. And just from saying something as simple as that, she could breathe as opposed to deadlines. Deadlines? Corporation? Where are my lifelines? Yeah. When, when, you, when, you, when you're giving someone positive energy, it's like you are, you're giving them a chant. See, words, like Santos says, words, letters, all of them are they're rituals. They're magical. And when you say them, they have a vibration. Right. Yes. See, meditation can work in a bad way, too. It can be called deditation. Well, I, I found a word, deditation, where we're just sort of, we're all like, for example, when I go to the saunas and steam rooms, everyone has their phone in the sauna and steam room at my universe, sweating with beats, with freaking beats by Dre headphones. Okay. And I tell them, I say, listen, there's radiation in your phone. So imagine if there's 20 of us sweating with these phones, how much radiation is that going into your body? And they all look at me like, like no one is telling them the basic stuff. You know, it's like, it's amazing. It's amazing. Could I share something? I made a connection with this, uh, <laughs> the idea of the, of the earth and the disc. So clavicle means key. And Cleopatra named herself after this bone. And I thought, why? Etymology. Cleopatra relates to the clavicle. Well, unkey means earth. Key. This is pretty flat if you look at it, right? It's pretty much like a disc. And this would be your dome. So in, in, in black culture, you know, we say, she gave me dome. We always use this dome thing, right? I don't think it's a coincidence that we have a dome over our key. This bone right here, I'm convinced is a very important bone and is a symbol of that actual disc of the earth. Like this, I, I believe for me, is that platform. Your torus fields, hence whirling wheel chakra, when you breathe from your torso, which is the halo shape, I believe all this is connected, as I'm bringing it up, it's bringing this little disc. And what the earth, I believe, does, it's a symbol of that. The earth is like a, it's a platform and it's holding. And then it bursts in that dome that we have above us, as I believe a vibration coming from beneath the chakras that Santos was talking about, other chakras beneath the earth, and they're all working together, good and bad, good and bad. And they hit the earth and they elevate. And then we are on the most beautiful plane or symbol of that, in my opinion. I'm to y'all. <laughs> I actually think that resonates quite well. I mean, it almost follows the same principles like the eye, you know? You look at the outside of the eye, kind of like your clavicle, and then the uh, pupil part would be where the head or everything else would come up because the head would represent the crown or where the energy, you know, the energy in out area right here. So that hole would go in through the clavicle area. So yeah, I, I could see that all being interconnected and everything. Yeah, man. Yeah. And so I think our, our Egyptians, they would do, they were, they were, they were connected to it. You know, um, egg hides in the word Egypt, you know, Kemet and Kush give birth to Egypt. It means black. Well, soil is black. We're all black. This whole thing, black lives matter, matter. Well, of course, black makes matter. Dirt makes everything. Every color, every flower comes from uh, these names and they're, they're just containers of energy. And it's sad that uh, we get intellectuals who sort of just give us, you know, <laughs> definitions, but they don't give us an actual esoteric grasp of how we relate to it and how if we are um, using the words and using our bones and our vibration, we could all be little bells that elevate things and set forth a spark which I believe is what stars are. Even Sanchez says that the stars were sperms. I, when he said that, I was like, shit. Look at the uh, Ophiuchus constellation. It's an obelisk. It's the penis. And then beside the Ophiuchus, you have the Chotum and Scrotum, I think, constellation. Scrotum? Hmm. Maybe the balls of Osiris? Right. Well, that's all of us. So it's just sexual energy. And so these constellations, they're shooting energies and they're working together. They know what they're doing. They know what their value is, and they get it done. It's good and bad. It's 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 more it's more complex. Yeah, go ahead. Of course. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, they're all aligned with those stars for a reason. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, totally. Yeah, totally. I mean, those are yeah, totally. Yeah, I agree with you on that. These things are very old. 
totally. They've been, they've been around. I mean, if, if anything, um, I would, I would, this, this is a battery. The pyramid's a battery and it's, and it's, it's generating. It's awesome. So of course it would be something that's, uh, that goes beyond anything. Totally. I mean, if we have it in our head, I was talking about the, the clavicle key, the dome of the head, uh, middle area pyramids in your brain. Um, Egypt comes from the term black for soil, vibrations, energy. It's okay if you don't remember. I mean, there's, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I'll be honest with you. I I'll tell you. I'll tell you this. I know that the human body came before those pyramids and that we have metal array pyramids in our brain. So I, I don't know. I think it goes all the way back to the very, very, very first body or bodies. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what they look like. Um, I know that we, we had, well, they've been tampered with a lot. They've been messed with. And of course, you know, man coming in and, ch you know, building Taco Bells and for Christ's sake in Egypt now and Pizza Huts. And <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, no, no, it's good. Cause I've also, you know, there's a, there's an old pyramid in Ireland. It's like a, it's, it's actually probably, probably older than the ones in Egypt. Have you heard of, I forget the name of it. But there's a pyramid in Ireland that's pretty old too. So this this is this is pretty deep. I mean, this concept is not just in Africa. You know what I'm saying? It's it's clearly a design that's I believe created syncretism. It had to. I mean, because it's you see it the ziggurat in Samaria, you see it in in, in uh, Mexico. They had theirs. There's pyramids underwater. I think in Japan they find. I'll let Matthew take that. What happens when an organic material becomes. Uh... Uh, like rock that's petrification so you're with that uh with that uh hypothesis that would mean that the pyramid was made out of an organic material and then it petrified over time into stone that would mean the closest thing that it would be would be wood the pyramid would be built out of wood but it wouldn't i don't think it would have the well no, it would be more evident. I mean, petrification becomes pretty obvious, especially with how old they say the pyramids are. After a certain amount of time, there's a place called the Petrified Forest in America, and all throughout it, all the stumps and whatnot turn into opal. It's a, it's, it's this really pretty mineral, but that's what happens after petrification for a really, really long time. It starts turning it into like an opal. So the pyramids would technically be like all opal if they were petrified. So, yeah. Interesting. I'm also making a connection with Medusa turning things into stone. I know Medusa's the stars from watching Santos's work and the pyramids are facing this. So there has to be totally, I mean, I don't know exactly. I believe it's definitely a crystal energy because it's. Hey guys, did you, did you guys know there's a underwater pyramid in Japan? Japan, yeah, I thought so. I mentioned, yep. I had no idea. That's insane. Like, I didn't know that the Japanese yeah, or the Asians at all had any kind of pyramids, honestly. Yep. But yeah, so, sense. see. Yeah. So, you have to remember. All the ones in America, they hide the best. Because I've only heard of, like, one here in America. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, our brain, once again, is designed. We have metal array pyramids in our brains, right? So... It would make sense to me that this antenna, the sense of this tetrahedron, this, this energy that we all had diverse ways of expressing it, and that we're probably going to find a lot more of them because we have them in our head. They're thoughts. I believe they're thoughts. If I can chant Hare Krishna to my dirt, just, just chanting that from through thin air and grow a solid green bamboo-like tree or plant, I mean, it just... It makes sense that I think that we were all at one point extremely connected to our source, our thoughts, and the stars, and we built them from here. And we have pirates of the Caribbean, pirates, pyros, fire. Well, since I opened up my pineal gland, I feel pressure. I don't know. What, what's the burial chamber? I'm sorry. Ah, okay. Do you have pictures of it? Do you have pictures of these mounds? Like, do you have some some images of what you're talking about? Yeah, I'm interested to see if 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 you do. If not, it's cool. Okay, if you can, I mean, if you 
yeah, if you can try to get some, that would be cool. Cool. That sounds cool. Sounds interesting. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I mean, there's tons of phenomena, phenomena everywhere. <laughs> I mean, m- Mother Nature is a genius, isn't she? She's always surprising. <laughs> you can't. Oh, it's okay if you can't. I don't. I'm. I'm still new to this, so I don't know if I'm missing something to do. Just to insert here, I have a friend who dances at Rombear. Have you heard of Rombear, Karen, in London? It's a famous modern company. I think it's interesting. It's called Rom. Ram, Brahma, the head, bear. Interesting. See, it's all connected at once again, really into the Hindu. They, they just, so much awesome information with that. So if I could ask Matthew, Matthew, so where, where are you from, man? I'm in uh, Grants Pass, Oregon right now. Cool. And are you in school? Or are you just complete researcher and what do you, what's, what's oh, your I, background? I've tried school on many platforms, my man. I graduated high school early. Uh, I tried uh, campus college and I made it about five hours into my first day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not wow, even kidding, you, dude. I, uh, I, I, dude. I got out of school early and I joined the Air Force and I realized that sucked, and I I left. Well, I I didn't just uh, I didn't realize it sucked and left. But I had a heart condition, you know, and it was medical and whatnot. But mm-hmm. I left, and it did suck, and I'm glad I left because it would have been whatever, anyways. But yep. I kept traveling, and then I tried doing campus college. And right when I got into my my first class, which was Spanish class, I sat down, and it just sucked and then i got to my next class and i sat down and it sucked and then uh like a half hour into my class after that i got up and i walked out and i didn't go back to school for a few years got a laptop tried to do online school because i'm like I, I don't like class maybe that's what it was so i did online and then uh i just i don't know dude when when learning becomes a um <clears throat> becomes like a necessity like you better do this i guess i can't do it it's either that or subconsciously i knew that i was learning a bunch of bs and mm. i just couldn't stand it because whatever because all this stuff that i'm learning right here i've been doing you could ask my best friend she's sitting here next to me i've been doing this for like days non-stop the second i wake up till i go to sleep and i only sleep like yep. a few hours and it gets it gets on people's nerves but like I can't help it. I've got a mindset to find the answer to something and I'm going to find it. That's awesome, man. That's yes. Yeah. It's, you know, when I first started getting into the information, man, I was getting into symbolism and I was actually in England at the time I was staying with a friend in London and I, I went outside and I started making all these connections and I started to feel like, Holy shit. Like there's a lot more going on. And, everything just started to pop out and it's kind of, Oh, there it is. Cool. Uh, I'll check it in a second. But, uh, hold on. And just to, just to chime in. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. To chime in with Matthew, like, I don't know how, man, but this is my, I'm almost done. I'm in my last semester at um, university of Iowa and I don't know how I'm doing it. I, I'll be honest with you. Like they're, they're trying to go for a diversity. And I believe that it's more about, oh, okay, cool. We have some, some people of color. Let's see if it works. And then it, it just kind of feels like, well, oh, maybe it's not working. So maybe we should just sort of get rid of some or make it hard or so many mistakes and, and weird things that are going on. And, you know, there's a lot of good people there too who have been very supportive. And so I'm grateful. So I'm not going to completely, you know, bash it because it's definitely been very open to me because I teach in the way that I teach and it's a miracle it's in a system that's designed to institutionalize and control but you know I'll be honest man it's the, it's the last leg I have like maybe four more months left and a part of me is just like why it's because it's a battle you know they, they fight you and they want you to defend yourself and defend and and they're flawed they make all kinds of mistakes in their syllabuses but then um if I say hey there's a mistake here it's, it's hindered my progression I feel like, you know, I get, no, just do it. Like what you said, just, just do it, do it, do it. You know, raw rigor. That's not, that's not consciousness. That's not what the intellect wants. I don't feel it doesn't need to be traumatized in order to get a point across. 
why am I defending myself? <laughs> it's, it's just like this constant like uh, structure of you're never good enough. Like in ballet, same thing. When I was dancing, long story short, um, it, yes, totally I'm more sensitive. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, you're right. Yep. <laughs> I think we all could. But I'm just saying it's a miracle that my thesis proposal went through because it's about astrology and I, I'll never forget I was in class. It's called it's queer studies. And so I was in the class because I'm trying to get as much information about the sacred feminine and how it's being repressed. And of course, we are afraid of talking about anything to do with the goddess or anyone who associates with being feminine and it's weak. And we insult them. And I'll never forget this. My, my teacher was saying he was defining homosexual. So I raised my hand. I said, um, homosexual etymology actually relates to Uranian, which relates to Uranus, which means Greek for the heavens. Now, when I said that, he looked at me. This is an Oxford, you know, graduate, you know, PhD, all this stuff. He knows Kemet. He speaks all this right, Hebrew. He can, he, can, he can decode things. And, you know, I, I could sense in his body that he felt like I was maybe trying to show off or make it weird because the energy shifted once I did that. Now, as opposed to embracing that and, and saying, hey, wow, etymology.com, all you have to do is just look up a word and you can maybe associate what your vibration is to astrology as opposed to of people. So then now the gays are hating the gays and the transgenders are hating the trans and they're competing and the feminists are hating those people. It's like everyone's in a group, in a group. No, 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 no. Don't go to a group. Go to information, man. Research. Go online. And this guy was basically saying, don't research. Don't go, don't go to Google. You can't do that. Why would you discourage people from getting information for free? How did I get to university? From research. It's, it baffles me. The ego is so, man, and ego is geo, which means earth, by the way. It's all about earth. <laughs> Captain EO, Michael Jackson in Disney World, that was a thing back in the day. What is EO but geo? Ghana is earth. Guyonum, the G in Freemasonry, is earth. Gionim is hell in Jerusalem, which Santo says is your third eye, which is a triangle point. It's right here. Once again, that pyramid, right? Hmm. What came first, us or these structures? You know, what, did, what happened with this brain of ours? We've, we've lost the, right, the impetus to, to, to influence people to go on their own and research. So I'm going to stop hogging the mic. If Matthew wants to chime in or Karen, please feel so. Oh, yeah, let me go to Facebook. Sorry, you sent a lot. I'm going now. I, I'd love to continue, but I'm going to go ahead and step out now so me and my okay. friend can hang out and go yes. to bed in just yes. a bit. Pleasure to meet you, man. I want to hang out. I, I, I can't wait for next talk. Let me know when it's going down. I'll be here. Yes. Definitely. Pleasure Definitely. to meet you, man. What, what sign are you, Pleasure brother? Pleasure to meet you guys, too. Pisces. Pisces. Cool. Pisces. All right, later, y'all. Cheers. Okay, Karen. Okay, Karen, I'm, I'm checking these out. Well, I've made a connection. One of your pictures is really cool. Uh, this one, well, this one, Old Sarum Castle. If you put a C in Sarum, you get Sacrum, which is sacred, which, once again, telling you for sure, there's... The bones and the elements in our bodies, clearly, all over the world, we're synced. We, we, we were synced. We were connected to our body and nature. And we built things as a reflection of that. It's, I mean, you're, you're showing me. Even in the names, it says the body part, right? So it's a no-brainer, literally. A no-brainer? <laughs> it's cool. Oh, those are sacred places. Those are sacred for sure. There's, they're, yeah, they're spiritual. I'm seeing it. Have you done a presentation on these pictures? You should. Cool. Well, yeah, you should definitely do your, you should do your own take on it. Do your own take and expand upon it because what you're saying, this stuff, I would, yeah, keep going with it. It's interesting. Cool. Well, I can't speak on these these images, I don't know, but uh, I can tell by the names that there's definitely something much deeper than just man building them <laughs> or, or a moat. I don't know, but you know, it's kind of it's kind of late in my house. I should probably uh, wrap it up <laughs> because I think people are sleeping. But so when when do you think we should um, do this again? This is really amazing. This was 
Yeah, you are. Wow. I would. So I think New Year's Eve, I might possibly be able to jump in there at some point. If that's cool. Oh, I would love to get in there at some point for sure. My gosh, you're kidding me. I could have been wow. I could have been me. I included me. <laughs> it was great listening to you. Hi, you did. Pleasure to meet you. Absolutely. So, yeah, I'm. I will definitely love to get in there. But once again, I want to say thank you. But this is, I'm sure, this is going to be great. This is going to be great. I'm going to do much more of these with you. You're you're the best. Cool. Yeah. Send me his stuff, and um, I look forward to doing this again for sure. Just send me. Yeah. Today you sent me the uh, the message. I got it while I was out, and I saw, and then I was able to sync with you. So just send me the message whenever you guys are floating, and then I'll just jump in. Maybe it's it's nine thirty two here now. PM. <laughs> no, you don't. And if you did, I'm sure you would season me. <laughs> oh no, you it's <laughs> man. Y'all y'all make it work though. Even if there's misunderstandings or disagreements, I just I just love that you know this. It, it doesn't get it doesn't escalate. It's just passion. It's passion. That's all. It's good. <laughs> well, that's because of, uh, I mean, when I saw Santos's presentations like years ago, it was his direct energy. I was like, okay, I know this person. I felt like this was a person that I'd met before. And I just started to vibe right away. And he made it so easy and it was enjoyable. And no one says pig's bum like him. Pig's bum. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Uh, it's classic it's shit. It's classic shit. Yeah. But I'm I'm a, I'm gonna get off and um so yeah just just holler at me when you, when we do it again and uh, thanks it was an honor and a pleasure to meet you Judith I'm I'd love to hear more from you next time as well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Some of you. <laughs> Definitely yes, ma'am. Peace. Bye. Peace. Bye.